okay friends now let's make a quick video on how natural killer cells kill other infected cell or infected uh, or bacterial infected cells let's let's talk about it okay now we know that uh, we have already discussed about cytotoxic killer cell right or ctls we also call it ctls or cytotoxic killer cell also designated as tc cells now these cells are also killer cells they can also kill but along with that we are having another killer cell they are called nk cells or natural killer cell which are also originated from the same lineage uh, like this tc the lineage is called that lymphoid progenitor right now this nk cell usually they are called natural killers because they are meant for the killing but tc cells are not uh, tc cells are also meant for killing but they require the activation via t helper cells but this natural killer cell won't require any activation because they are always activated they just they are they are just, they just dangerous cops they are moving all around through the street whenever they find some difficulties they they just hold them and kill them just like that so they are the executioner natural executioner of our immune system uh, that's how i look at this n cells or nk cells okay so how they kill actually uh, they are moving through the blood stream they are moving on to the tissues where everything is going on so they just uh, wandering around throughout the place right so now what 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 they can do they are they, they can receive signal by attaching with or engaging with normal cells now if they get their positive signals so the signal can be positive the signal can be negative if there is a positive signal is going on then everything is fine if the signal is not there then they are going to kill that cell right for example when they are interacting with a normal cell what is going on let's find it out now here say this is the normal cell now as a result of this normal cell attachment what they are finding they are, they, are, they try to find two different interactions right two important interaction here we can say uh, one interaction is with the class 1 mhc molecule which is popping out from normal cell another interaction via the ar ligand which is also popping out from the normal cell right so they expect the normal cell to be expressing two important important constituents like class 1 mhc as well as ar ligand right and their own they are having ar or a receptor here and obviously they are having another important cd90 Four, which is going to be attached with class 1 mhc right so this is the basic two fold interaction that is possible when they are going to interact with normal cells right so whenever they go this normal cell is healthy let's say let's assume this is a healthy cell so let me write it here healthy so this cell is completely healthy so no problem is there so just attachment is there so healthy cells are expressing mhc molecules that's a very very uh, important point that all the healthy cells they they can make mhc1 molecule so here they are making mhc1 molecule so no problem is there they are just going and receiving for the signal looking for the signal so as they are having mhc1 as well as ar ligand they are interaction so both them are positive as a result they find the signal is it's everything is spying into the normal cell it is healthy so just move on so just break the interaction it start start moving and won't do any harm onto the normal cell now in the second scenario if they find some abnormal cell now what happens during the abnormal cells what kind of abnormal cells we are talking about normally when the cells are infected with pathogens or any kind of cells like uh, so like cancerous cells or tumor malignant cells all the cells they are lacking so let me write it here they are lacking mhc1 molecules onto their surface this is very very important step they lack mhc1 molecules onto their surface so as they are having no mhc1 onto their surface but they still can express ar ligand now here comes the important step so when the natural killer cell interacts with this kind of infected cell so in those cases they get only one signal which is from ar ligand with ar interaction but they won't get any signal by the interaction of class 1 mhc and cd94 because there is no class 1 mhc so as a result of that it provides the signal to the nk cell is that something was going on or wrong inside this cell so just kill this cell so nk cells will start secreting some chemical mediators they will soon penetrate this cell membrane of this infected cell and kill this infected cell and whenever we are having an infection in our cell like viruses and other bacteria they come inside our cell infect our cell there is only one way to get rid of it is that to kill our own cell otherwise we can't go against it because we can't kill viruses by catching them one after another because viruses don't uh, behave like a living organism outside the cell so we can keep only virus inside the cell and kill those cells which are uh, now the hostages for the virus right so these are the situations now let's talk about how they are killing or what is the mechanism of killing now here we can see there is a there is a re receptor mediated uh, signaling procedure that is going on so we can see here here when when they are finding this ar and ar ligand interaction after that we are having the pass ligand that are coming out of 
both the NK cells. Now, as their fast ligand interactions is done by fast receptor and fast ligand, as a result of that, uh, they, they 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 come really closer. So here, if I draw the structure, this is a natural killer cell. So I'm writing NK. Let me change the color. So this red one, let's say, is our defected cell. Now, when they come really close to each other, so they can. Uh, so there are some vesicles, there are some granules that are present inside this NK cells. They are uh, they contain granzyme and perforin, these two important chemical mediators inside the granules. And these granules are found in the NK cells or NK cell cytoplasm. Now, as they come really close to each other, these granules are fused with the cell membrane of infected cell. So you can see here the fuse of the cell membrane. Now, as they have fused. They released all these components of granzyme and perforin. Now, among them, this perforin is an important institute constituent which will uh, create pore onto the cell membrane. So you can see here in this picture a little bit more clearly that here is the granule. Now, as the granule moves and attaches with or fuse with the cell membrane or double cell membrane region, it will start re removing or releasing perforin monomers, which will soon produce the cylindrical channel, which creates a pore through the pore. It, it will lead to the generation and entry of other enzyme which is here the granzyme B. Now actually the killing mechanism is initiated by granzyme B for, but for the insertion of granzyme into the infected cell it requires perforins to create holes onto it right. So when the perforin creates the hole granzyme will easily enters into the cell after the entry of granzyme it, it, it kills the cell in two different machinery first is that it, it start uh, it it makes the mRNA really uh, it's sorry it makes the mitochondria release cytochrome C. So cytochrome C is usually found in mitochondria inside the mitochondria. Now as a result of this granzyme activity, it will start secreting cytochrome C into the cytoplasm. And secretion of the cytochrome C into the cytoplasm indicates the cell to go to normal programmed cell death or apoptosis. So it triggers the signal of apoptosis. This is the very beginning. This is the very first signal. Now the second signal is that it activates procaspase. How? Because normally procaspase is inactivated by an inhibitor of procaspase. Now this 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 granzyme can go and cleave that inhibitor. So let's say this is the procaspase, which is inactive because the active side of this procaspase is blocked by another enzyme. Let's say this is blocked by the inhibitor. So this is inhibitor of procaspase. Now in this case, this granzyme goes and it cleaves this inhibitor out so as a result it re it results in uh, the active so now it converts this procaspase into the active form so this is the active form this is inactive form of uh, procaspase now this is the active form of procaspase now this procaspase as it is active it can move and it can activate procaspase 3 uh, into active caspase 3 now this caspase in finally again trigger the pathway of apoptosis inside the cell and also it can produce some other uh, deadly components like APAF1 and procaspase 9 which finally lead to the caspase cat, uh, encoding pathway and finally it will uh, it will guide this cell infected cell through apoptosis which is the programmed cell death so simply it is not killing the cell on its own like that it is triggering the machinery of autolysis or auto degradation of the cell called apoptosis and this is again established by NK cells. Now remember I have told in the previous video, in, in live videos, I have explained how uh, cytotoxic T cells kill cell. Now we have also seen that cytotoxic T cells are also having same functionality. They are also having granzymes, perforins, ex exciting and, and also they are also killing the cell using the same machinery like that. But simply the difference is that cytotoxic killer cells need to be activated due to the presence of T helper cells. But on the other hand, natural killer cells are not required. Uh, any uh, Natural killer cells don't require the, the presence of T helper because they are naturally meant for killing all the cells. So whenever they find some difficulties, less amount of MHC onto the surface, they will kill the cell via perforin and granzyme mediated pathway. So that's it and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.